Hi there, I'm Jennifer Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio, and I've got a fun project that I'm gonna share with you. I don't know about you, but we moved this last summer and not everything fared well through the move. So a few things got damaged. So we're finally gonna get around to actually fixing some of this stuff. This is a cute little um, chalkboard I've had for many, many years. I got it from Pottery Barn and um, it got dented, okay? It actually got hit and chipped and we're gonna do some repair on this and we're just gonna go ahead and update it so that I have a great piece for my house still. Okay, and we'll get started. So the first thing that we need to do here is I'm going to grab my texture medium, which I use for everything, you guys. This stuff is great to uh, repair with. It's great to trowel with. We use it with our rollers. We have boss stencils. We do so much with this, but it was just the easiest stuff for me to grab. Okay, so I've put some out on plate. I'm just using a room key from one of my travels, okay? And I'm just going to go ahead and just trowel it over the top backfill those little divots that were unfortunately made during the move and I'm going to kind of raise them up a little bit high. I'm also going to get this other little one over here, okay, because I'd rather have a little too much on there, let it dry, and then I can sand it down smooth. So we're going to let this dry and then we're going to come back, we're going to tape everything off and we're going to get ready for some fun. Well, repair work is done. Uh, it's not exactly perfect, but I know it sure looks a whole lot better than it did, okay? I took this outside, we um, sanded the areas that we repaired, as well as I sanded the whole rest of the frame, cleaned it up, and then taped off my center panel. And I used what's called an orange core tape, which is more delicate because this is a chalkboard, okay? Um, I also am using these little triangles, which are wonderful, to um, keep me off of my surface so it's easier to paint the frame. And we're going to be working with a product called Bondego. And Bondego is a paint and primer all in one. So this is going to be a great surface uh, paint. And all I'm going to do is just paint the entire thing black because this is going to be my first coat uh, for our foils. Um, most foils look really great over a dark surface. And the foils that I've picked for this um, are definitely going to look great over black. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint the whole frame black and then we'll have to allow this to dry and then we will get on to um, using our foil adhesive and the fun part of creating a decorative finish with the foils. Our layer of black paint is dried and so now we're ready to go ahead and start our next layer which is going to be the foil adhesive. So this is our own brand under Artsyville Embellishments, and it's the first layer to accomplishing a foil transfer. So we are gonna be transferring these beautiful foils um, once we get the adhesive on. So our first step is I've already taken the adhesive out and put it on a foam plate, which just makes it easier to work with. Um, and it looks milky white, but this product will dry completely clear. So you want to go ahead and just brush it on the surface just like you would have brushed a layer of paint. Um, you want to make sure that you have a hundred percent coverage because if you don't have any foil adhesive down you're not going to um, you're not going to have any transfer okay. So the foil adhesive is the only thing that allows the foil the metalization of the foil to transfer to your surface, okay? And you wanna to try to make sure that you are not making a whole lot of different brush strokes in different directions because this product is, is thick, it does not self-level. So you, oops, I got it on the chalkboard there. So you want to make sure that um, you're putting it on as smooth as you can possibly put it on because that is going to give you the smoothest transfer as well. Um, so if, if I brushed it in all kinds of different directions like that, that might show. So you want to come back 
And if you're putting it on haphazardly, that's fine. But make sure you come back and that you smooth out as much as you can with your brush strokes, okay? Um, that'll just ensure a smoother application with our foils. So um, we will allow this to dry for at least an hour. And I do recommend at least an hour, no matter what time of year, because you want to make sure that the foil adhesive is drying all the way down to what we call a firm tack. And that is going to give it the um, ability to pull that metallization um, off of the carrier for the foil transfer. So I'm just going to finish this up and then we're going to allow this to dry. So the foil adhesive is finally dry and now it's the fun part, okay? We get to play with the foils. So I decided I was going to use this beautiful silver rose pattern on the four corners and then I'm going to use the cheetah pattern in between. So what I've done is I'm using a quilter's ruler so that I can see through it and I'm trying to mark um, a line that is equal, okay, um, from both sides so that I can have a line to follow here, okay. So I'm trying to like line this up to the corner and then have about the same amount of space on either side and mark my line. Now, it's probably not going to be perfect, but it'd be better than just trying to eyeball that, okay. <laughs> so the quilter's ruler works pretty cool. Um, so now... I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of the silver foil off. And, oh, I'm gonna really, really want a straight piece. So I think we're gonna go get our cutter and cut straight pieces so that we'll have a perfect line. Okay, this is our great little tool that we use. It's basically a, a paper cutter, but this will allow us to cut some perfect straight edges. And that we're gonna need for the four corners, okay? So I'm gonna use this cutter to cut my, my three more pieces so I have a straight edge, okay? Because if I just cut it with my scissors, I might not have as straight of a line as I would like. So we don't try to depend on ourselves for being straight. We just get out the tools. Uh, so again, I'm going to try to keep it up high as I line that up to the line that I made, okay, and then smooth it down, and then just let it wrap to both sides, and smooth it on there. And like I said, we're just going to leave the four corners on, and you're going to see why, okay? I'm going to try to do this from this angle as well, so maybe you can have a good look at it from that side. And this frame is curved in a little bit, okay? So trying to make sure that I allow it to curve. You can see how I'm just smoothing it out. Now I'm just gonna leave the four corners on to start with. Okay, I gotta make sure I've got my, my nice straight edge, okay? Not the scissor cut edge. Um, let's see if I can find my line. And then again, smooth that on. Oh my gosh, these foils are so incredibly beautiful. And this is gonna be so cool. And I think a pretty easy way to do this, okay? So now I can go ahead and cut the cheetah foil. And we can just cut strips and finish out the other areas, okay? So I think I'm gonna to try to cut a piece as long Okay, and I gotta make sure this doesn't get stuck, okay, inside there. So I'm gonna pull this to the side. You might not be able to see exactly what I'm doing, but I'm trying to cut it long enough, and then I'm gonna take the full piece, okay, the long piece that I cut, and I'm gonna cut this in half. Again, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see me do that, but we are just gonna cut it right down the middle so that we have some longer strips, okay, that can go down the sides. And let's see if I cut this long enough. Oh, maybe not, okay. Oops. So I was gonna try to do this all in one, but oh, I'm a little short, okay, but we'll have to just piece in there. 
Not too bad though, okay? So this way I can wrap that whole section. And let's go ahead and do the opposite side. And sometimes these want to curl, so it's, it can be easier to go ahead and start with them, fold it in half, and then flip them loose, okay? And that way you can get them onto the surface where you want it to be. Uh, where's my cloth? Okay, I like using my cloth first. Okay, we're still going to have to do a little piece here because I did not cut that long enough. But what I was wanting it to do is if I needed to use my scrub brush at all, this was going to give us complete um, coverage of foil because I didn't want to use my scrub brush and get onto the adhesive. Okay, so that was kind of my whole thought there. Uh, but I'm going to cut a little piece here off of this area and I can cut this in two pieces actually and we can get this to finish out that little corner that I got. I was a little too short. This is going to look so great and what an improvement from being able to upcycle and just repurpose, you know, not so much repurpose, but bring new life to something that you've had and you've enjoyed, but, you know, it's either gotten tired um, or just you need a new life to it, okay? So if you don't get enough um, coverage by just rubbing it, the scrubber brush is wonderful, okay? So then you can use a little bit more pressure and you can scrub onto that surface so that you'll get as much release as you possibly can. Now, in the tight little corners, when you get into places like this, we go for a toothbrush as well so that we can scrub in to those little areas. Or you can also even use your fingernails sometimes work really good. Okay, so let's reveal this first piece. Take a peek. And if there's any place that didn't cover really well, we can put the foil right back down and double check before we completely remove it, okay? So I always kind of talk about like burping at first, okay? Making sure that you're happy with it um, because if you're not and there's a, some foil that didn't release, it'll be right where it should be if you just lift it up and then put it back down. Okay, so our first piece is transferred. Doesn't that look great? Oh my gosh, this is going to be such a fun uh, addition to my house, okay? okay? So let's scrub this side. Try to make sure we've got everything done. Okay, I can get my corner over here now. And let's make sure that we have it all the way down on that edge, okay? So if it grabs out further away, because you know when I brush the adhesive on, it brushed onto the tape. So if it grabs further away, always kind of like lift it up to let it release, and that way you can push it down to where it needs to go. And then release. Awesome. Okay. Let's get this side over here done. I've got a big air bubble, so I'm just going to lift that up and put it right back down. Okay, let's make sure our corner is on really good. Okay, let's get this last side closest to you. rubbing on our corners, okay? Make sure that we've got good, good, good coverage there. Oh, 
I hope you guys think this is as much fun as I do. This is awesome. Woohoo! Okay, to finish this off is really easy, okay? So always make sure you protect your foils because they can get scratched if you just leave them as they are. Um, I like using a product called Final Coat, but you can use whatever top coat you have, okay? Final Coat to me is kind of fun because it's just easy. Um, all I do is just unscrew that lid, tip it over onto some cheesecloth or just a soft cloth. You can also use um, staining pads, and all you have to do is just wipe it on. It goes on nice and thin, and you can just build your layers, okay? So normally I'll put on at least two to three layers, um, depending on the use of the piece. Now I know that this will be highly used in my house, so we're probably gonna put on three to four layers and make sure that all my work stays gorgeous for years to come. So thank you so much for joining me for this fun upcycling project. My chalkboard is gonna look wonderful in my house once again. If you're looking for a list of the supplies, they are listed in the description of the video. Thanks for joining me once again.